Hello, how are you doing? Um, we're back again for more Bitwig. Um, we are going to be continuing our journey today through all of the devices in Bitwig. The star of today's show is the transient control device, which controls transients. So here we have the transient device. So first of all, we'll just have a little look at what the transient device actually does. And then we look at a few cool ways that you can use it. So the transient device, if we put something through it, in this case, we're going to put a kick drum through it. You can see it's kind of reading the transients that are coming in. So we've got um, an attack and a sustain parameter, which I'll go into in a second, but let's just have a look at the device as a whole first. So first we've got a sidechain input, um, we, which will allow us to take input from another track and use that as our transient controller. Um, we'll have a little look at that in a bit. Um, you've got an effects uh, section here where you can put effects in. Um, it's very important to note that the effects you put in here can actually be controlled by the attack and sustain values down here. So um, if you want to use effects to be controlled by this, you're going to want to put them in there. The next part we have is the display. This top part of the display here is basically showing us the attack part or the main transient. And the second part here is showing us the sustain, or you could think of it as being the body of the sound. Uh, then we have the attack and the sustain parameters down here. So we'll start with the attack. The attack basically is taking the initial transient and allowing you control over its volume. The amount of the uh, the amount of the sound the device is considering a transient is controlled by this. So let's bring down that gain a bit. So you can see what's happening here is at the lowest time we're getting just that real just the initial click is is what it's boosting and as we bring the time up it's sort of holding out a little longer and it's bringing some of the body into the transient so it's bringing some of that body into the transient and i suppose thickening it up and making it a bit more of a bassy and less of a clicky transient. So the next one we've got here is the sustain. The sustain works a little bit differently um, with how the time control works. So again, the gain is boosting the sustain phase or the body of, in this case, the kick. So you can see the bassier part is being lifted up as I bring up this gain. The time here is a bit different in that it's not choosing the time of the decay, it's choosing how soon after the transient it begins to bring up the volume. So you'll see that here. As I bring up the time, it's kind of leaving a little gap between the transient and when it starts to bring up the volume. So yeah, those are the basic controls for the transient shape. We've got a couple other options over here. So we've got peak and RMS. If I turn it on to peak here, which is the default setting, it's kind of snappier. And the reason for that is peak, let's bring this way down and you can make it really clicky. Peak is basically reading the highest signal. Um, so the kind of peak volume that it reaches and it's basing the envelope off that. Whereas RMS is kind of uh, doing more the average of the entire sound instead of basing everything off the highest peak. So it has the effect of being sort of a subtler effect in, in that peak is kind of a, a, a faster reaction time for the transient. So, so peak is really snappy, especially at these lower values, it's really quick. And RMS is just a little bit gentler in practice. Then you've got a mix knob here, which allows you to mix the effect in. And that's pretty much all of the controls on the transient shaper. It's actually a pretty simple device. So let's have a little look at some of the interesting ways you can use it. I've got a couple of different examples here, um, ways, uh, different ways of changing sounds, as well as ways of kind of turning this into a way of bringing grooves into certain percussion loops and stuff like that. So. I've got uh, just a kick here, a similar kick to the one that I just showed you. And I just wanted to show you some of the utility for this attack and sustain modulators that you've got here. So basically what these are is they're taking this attack value that we're generating, that's as well as controlling the volume, it's also generating a modulation signal that's the same shape. And we can then apply this to the effects that are inside of the transient shaper. So in this case, 
just as an example, this is kind of more extreme than what you might do really. Um, I've got this attack parameter here, boosting some frequencies for the sort of transient of the kick to make the transient more extreme. And obviously if I change where that is, I'm gonna get a different sort of sound and transient. And we can even make the effect way more extreme. So let's let's bring that way up. And now we're getting a really sort of clicky transient there. And then in the sustain part, as I'm boosting up the sustain, I'm also boosting up, up the bass. So it has the effect of making the transient really, um, really clicky. And then the, the body becomes slightly more bassy. I'm also adding a little bit of um, extra. Let me just pull that down because that's kind of great. So another thing I'm doing here is I'm using this bit eight here to pretty much add sort of a noise um, to the start of the transient. So if I turn the bit eight off, it sounds like this. And then I'm turning it on. And what I'm using is I'm using this attack value to bring in this diffusion here. So this diffusion basically is sort of adding a noisy element to the signal or we could use dither. That's also kind of got a noisy sound. But I like this diffusion one because you can sort of control the color of your transient with it. So you can have a really bright transient if you go up, it, it sounds really kind of like a high pass to noise. And then I'm just using the attack phase here and depending on how I've got this set, that noise signal is gonna be different. Let's actually bring in the dither as well just to see how it sounds a bit different. Now you can really tighten it up there as well. And of course you can use that to control pretty much anything. You might want to bring in a saturation on the body. Um, you might want to bring in uh, some sort of a reverb on the tail of something or something like that. You can use it to control pretty much any effect. And you can also use it to control third party effects. Of course, as you can with the modulation system. So here I just have an example of maybe you would want a reverb on your snare, like kind of a really big reverb but you want to keep it away from the transient. So the transient is still punching through really clearly. So what I'm doing here is I'm bringing this sustain value here. So I'm taking the sustain modulator and I'm modulating the mix. So after the attack phase is done, we get this kind of big reverb swelling in. So you can see as I change this value here, it's gonna change the way that that reverb comes in. So you can keep it really far away from the transient. So if you want the transients to really punch through, you can pull in the reverb afterwards. So what I've got in this one is I've got the kick here, which is coming into this clap track. So I've gone into the side chain, I've selected the kick. So as my kick comes in, it's, um, it's got, I've got a layer here, an effects layer where I've got one dry layer I'll just open that up to show you. I've got one dry layer here that has no effect on it. And I've got one wet layer here that has a tool and a Valhalla vintage verb. So what that's doing is every time the kick hits, it's using the tool here to allow the snare through to the reverb. So these kind of extra, I guess, ghost notes aren't reverbed. So they're not, you know, taking up a bunch of space in the mix. So yeah, that's just a couple examples of how you can use the, the transient shaper to get different effects or even pull things in from other tracks to get effects. Now I wanna show you how you can use it to kind of add uh, a groove to things. So let's just turn off this reverb uh, for now so we can focus on what we're hearing here. So we've got this like really ugly sort of straight hat sound here that just has no groove to it whatsoever. It's just all straight ahead hats. So what I'm doing here is I've got a loop. So I've got this loop here. Um, I don't actually know what it is, so let's have a listen. So it's just some percussion loop that I've taken out of the library. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that in uh, to my transient control. So I'm going in here and I'm selecting it in the transient controller. So it's this 105 BPM um, B flat seven, whatever. And I'm using the transient signal, signal from this, the attack, to control the volume of these hats. So it's kind of imparting its, its groove onto the hi-hats. And then I'm using the sustain phase here to bring in some delay. So 
uh, when there's kind of a gap for the sustain to come through, we're getting a bit more delay through. So let's just hear the difference between that again. So here's the straight hats. Terrible. And then let's just hear that in with the rest of the drums, not two kicks. So this is without. And this is with. Now, another thing we want, might want to look at here is uh, we can also say record something in. So I've got this audio track that I recorded and it's just a guitar. So let's turn the transient shaper off here for a second. And we'll listen to the guitar by itself. So this is the guitar track. It's just a, something I've looped over and over. And then let's bring in the hats. And let's bring the guitar through to the hats with the transient control. And let's bring in the rest of the drums as well. So it's just a cool way of um, bringing grooves through to um, really anything. You could have a percussion loop and you could maybe have like a sample of a real drummer or something. And you might want to kind of bring that into your hi-hats or something like that. It can just be a, a very cool way of using it to get a kind of a, a cool groove you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Um, so, um, by the way, it doesn't actually change, just in case anybody's not, not fully sure on this, it doesn't actually change the timing of the hats. What it's doing is it's, it's kind of implying a rhythm with the way that it's changing the volume over time. The next thing I've got to show you here is I've got this polymer. So it's just uh, just straight unison chords here. And what I've got as well is I've got this shaker loop. So it's kind of a, a kind of a shuffly sort of a, a shaker loop. And I'm using that shaker loop to control the um, this effect that I've got here on the polymer. So let me show you that. So what it's doing is I've got the shaker loop coming in here. We'll just listen to that as well. So shaker loop is coming through here and I'm using the transient shaper attack control to control the filter cutoff here. And I don't believe I'm using the sustain for anything, but I might be. Yeah, I'm using that again just to swell in a delay when there's a bit of a gap between things. So then we get this kind of effect. And of course we can bring in anything we want here. So let's bring in that first loop that we were using on the hats. The one thing I will say is if you're bringing in loops, you want to make sure that you're not getting any sort of um, weird transient stuff where maybe you're stretching out the loop and there's some artifacts in there because the transient shaper will, will read that. So make sure there's not a whole bunch of like reverb or whatever going on. I mean, you can have a bunch of reverb going on. It's just it may cause issues. So just be aware of that. Uh, let's bring the guitar loop in here now. So now it's following this guitar. And then let's um, send the guitar loop also to the hats and we'll bring these hats in. Let's get rid of the shaker so we can hear the hats. So yeah, that's um, just a couple of interesting ways to use the transient shaper. Um, hopefully you have found this very helpful or helpful or at least not detrimental. Um, if you've felt any of those things except the last one, um, please subscribe to the channel and um, also give a like because it helps me out a lot. And let me know what else you want to see. Um, what other devices you want to see next? I've got a couple coming up that I've got planned. Um, but yeah, let me know.